Hi folks, this is Linear Algebra Checkpoint Quiz 8. We're given a set of vectors in R3. We're asked to show that it forms a basis for R3. So at this stage in the game, let's just recall what the definition of a basis is. Number one, it has to be linearly independent. And two, it has to span the whole space, in this case R3. So how do we show linear independence? We have to show that the only linear combination that gives me zero is when all the coefficients are zero. So let's take a linear combination of these three vectors. C1 times the first vector plus C2 times the second vector plus C3 times the third vector. And this is equal to the zero vector which we write in R3 like that. Well, this gives rise to a system of linear equations for C1, C2, and C3. When we multiply constants times vectors in R3, we're going to multiply each of these entries by those constants. And then we add corresponding entries together to get the sum. So the long and short of it is, I'm going to have negative C1 plus... 2c2 plus 5c3, that all, uh, that all has to equal uh, 0. I go through the second components, I get 0c1 plus 1c2 plus 0c3 has to be 0. And the third components, I get 3c1 uh, plus or excuse me, minus 4c2 plus 7c3, and that has to equal 0. So I'm just equating the like entries. So I'm going to write this as a matrix equation. If I write this as a matrix equation, ax equals d, then my matrix A is the coefficient matrix, which is negative 1, 2, 5, 0, 1, 0, 3, negative 4, 7. The unknown matrix X is the matrix C1, C2, and C3, because those are my unknowns. And the matrix D, that's just the zero column matrix. Now my goal is to show that not is there an answer because this is a homogeneous system of equations we always get an answer we need to show that the only answer I get is C1, C2, and C3 all being zero and I can do that quickly by checking the determinant of A if the determinant of A is non-zero then A is invertible and I'm done so in looking at the determinant of A I notice that the second row here has two zeros in it that I want to exploit. So I'm going to expand along the second row. Using the alternating sign pattern, I get the determinant of A is going to be 1 times the determinant of negative 1, 5, 3, 7. So I get negative 7, minus 15, negative 22. What's important about that? it's not zero. This tells me that A is invertible. Since A is invertible, <clears throat> AX equals D has one and only one solution for each choice of D. So that means in particular AX equals uh, D has one and only one solution. for any choice of constants D. So in particular, the only solution um, to AX is 0 is X equals 0. And that's exactly what I needed to show for linear independence. Now to show that it spans R3, I have to pick a generic vector in R3 and show that it's a linear combination of these guys. 
So I'm just going to let a, b, c be some generic vector in R3. I have to show there's a linear combination of these three vectors that uh, creates this vector. So I'm back to linear combinations again. But this time I'm looking to see if I can get them to add up uh, if there is a solution to this system. Not necessarily there's only one, but is there a solution to it? So I go through the usual. And once again, I'm not concerned with the actual answer here. I'm just concerned that there is an answer. Well, guess what's going to happen, folks? If I write it in terms of the matrix, that matrix A, does it look familiar? Oops. That's the same matrix A we had before. So, uh, we know from before the determinant of A is not zero. That means that A is invertible, which means there is a solution to AX equals D for every choice of D. And that's exactly what we needed to show. We needed to show that we could find an answer to any A, B, and C we picked out of R3. So the fact that the coefficient matrix was invertible tells us there's one and only one solution to any of the equations AX equals D. To show linear independence, we were using the uniqueness part. In other words, we were using the fact that there's only one solution to the homogeneous system in that case. To show spanning, we just needed at least one solution, and so that gives us that. That'll do it for number one.